Cause, a copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 244 at Vine Street and Santa Monica Boulevard. Assist the officer. That is all. Gordon. One of the characteristics of the criminal is his conceit. He suffers from an exaggerated ego. It is his belief that he possesses a mastermind and that the police are his inferiors in mental capacity. The criminal, especially of the slicker type, sure of himself, pits his wits against the police and really believes he will outwit them. Always he meets his Waterloo. How the criminal tried to beat the law enforcement authorities and how he planned for it, you will now hear in the story of life Liberty and the Pursuit of Parker. This story concerns one John Parker, respected citizen of a small Midwestern town and owner of a comfortable but unpretentious home. John Parker would appear to the casual observer a good average American citizen. Julia, John's wife, is also a popular member of the community. Her bridge tees are the delight of the literary club. And although her set considers Julia a bit too noisy and gaudy for rigid good taste, it manages to forgive the infraction, for Julia is from New York and just not used to the quiet life of a small town. Our scene is the Parker's living room. It is seven in the evening. I hate it. Uh, what did you say, Julie? I said I hate it. I hate what? You know very well what I'm talking about. This junk heap of a town, that's what. Oh. Take your feet off the chair. I want to sit down. Yes. Now, look, kid. Just how much longer do we have to stick in this burg? Will you tell me that? Stop reading that paper. Oh, in heaven's name, Julie, let's not start another row. It takes time, I tell you. You've got to give me time. You can't make a thing like this work in a day. A day? I wouldn't call seven years in this jerkwater town a day. I tell you, I'm sick to death of that clacking bunch of women with their silly gab about literature. And I'm sick of taking care of the house and going to the proper places and, and living on a dime a week. I won't take it much longer, John. I'm sick of it, do you hear? And I'm getting out, see? Oh, now, hold on there, Julie. Sit down, honey. Let's talk this thing out once and for all. Okay. I'm sitting. Talk. Now, seven years ago, back in little old New York, when we took each other for better or for worse, I meant it. Did you? Oh, of course you know I did, John. All right. As far as the cops were concerned, we were both as hot as flat irons, weren't we? Always had them on our trail because of some petty job. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we decided to put what money we had together and call it our operating capital. We decided that we'd make our 2000 bucks grow until it was 10000 Then we could pull one big job and live easy the rest of our lives. 
Our Liberty Bond job. Oh, can it, John. This bedtime story is making me sick. I know it forwards and backwards. But why on earth did we choose this town to work in? Why has it taken so long? Tell me that. Julie, uh, what would you think if I told you that my next paycheck will bring us up to the 10,000 mark? Hey, I, I feel weak all over. Is it really true, John? <laughs> it's really true. In two weeks from now, we'll be on our way. I was going to tell you tomorrow anyway, but you jumped me tonight. Oh, so... gosh. Oh, gosh, I can't talk. I'm so excited. <laughs> hey, where do we go? Uh, Kansas City, I think. <laughs> the best place I know of for the job. Hey, what about the bogus bonds? Where do we get them? Mm, don't worry about that, honey. I've already got them taken care of. Tell me. Well, you remember Hank Flynn back east? Yeah, yeah. Best forger in the business. He's been working on the fake liberties for months. I got them today. Through the mail? Express, stupid. Safe and sound and with no hitches from Uncle Sam. A half million bucks worth of forged Liberty bonds. Where are you going to get the good ones? Well, in Kansas City, of course. Oh, gee. Oh, gee, I don't know what to say. Just think. After seven years in this bird, pinching pennies and playing the small town homebodies, we're at last going to get away. Oh, gosh, I could scream for joy. <laughs> yeah, it is great, isn't it? But listen, little lady. Your days of being a homebody aren't over, you know. It'll be another six or eight months after we leave here before we can pull the job. Oh, I don't care about that. You'll at least be away from this hole. Oh, gee. <laughs> it just seems too good to be true. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm John Parker. I've just come to Kansas City, and I'm contemplating opening an account at the bank here. But before I do, I uh, I want to buy some Liberty Bonds. Uh, yes, sir. About how much did you want to invest, Mr. Parker? Well, I thought about $8,000 would be good to start with. I'd like to take the bonds with me if you have them. I think that can be arranged. Take a little time to get them ready, have them registered, etc. Oh, well, that's all right. Meantime, I can open my checking account, and as soon as the bonds are ready, you can call me up. Uh, here is my phone number. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. I'll make out your depositor's card. Uh, what is the address, Miss Parker? Uh, 1423 Richmond. 1423 Richmond. That's right. About uh, how much did you wish to deposit, Mr. Parker? Uh, $10,000. Oh, $10,000. That's nice. Uh, just sign here. Yeah. Now, I'll call you just as soon as the bond's ready. There you are. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you'll take advantage of our facilities here, Mr. Parker. If there's anything we can do for you, we'll be glad to do it. I'm sure I can use you. Uh, your bank, I mean. Uh, uh, good day, Mr. Parker. Good morning. I'll see you in a couple of days. Farmer's Trust, cashier's office. Yes, the statement was sent out. All right. Thank you. I uh, beg your pardon. Yes, sir. I'd like to speak to the cashier about opening an account, renting a lockbox. Yes, sir. Mr. Trent is our cashier. He'll help you. Good morning, sir. May I do something for you? Oh, yes, if you will. I'm Arthur Langland Smith. I'd like to open an account here. Oh, yes, Mr. Smith. I believe I heard you mention a lockbox, too. Well, yes. I, uh, I have here $125,000 worth of Liberty Bonds, and, well, I feel it's just a little too much to be carrying around with me. Don't you agree? <laughs> I most certainly do agree. <laughs> if you'll just come this way, Mr. Smith, the custodian will take care of the box for you. I'll ride back this way, if you please, Mr. Smith. Hmm. Nice bank you have here. Well, we're proud of it. There's a lot of business here. Yes, I've heard Independence a very nice town. Uh, going to be here long? Yes, I think so. In fact, I may go into business here if things turn out the way I hope they will. We'll be glad to have you call on us any time you need any capital. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll probably do that. Uh, here are the safe deposit boxes. Oh, uh, Bob, uh, will you fix up a number three box for Mr. Smith here? He has some Liberty Bonds he wants to leave with us. Certainly, sir. Uh, have you the bonds with you, Mr. Smith? Yes, yes, right here. Oh, uh, there's $125,000 there, Bob, so uh, be careful with it. Oh, yeah, I will, and how... Now, here's your uh, key, Mr. Smith. The other one, of course, we keep on file. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Smith, we'll go up and make out the signature card for your account. Oh, uh, by the way, is this a joint account? Will Mrs. Smith sign with you? Oh, no, no. I'll take care of everything myself. Oh. 
Following week, we find John Parker back in Kansas City. People State Bank, Dixon speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. Yes, I'll see to it right away, sir. Yes, sir, may I help you? Are uh, you Mr. Dixon, the cashier? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Feld, John Aiken Feld. I'd like to open an account here, and I think I'd better arrange for a lockbox, too. Oh, yes. If, uh, if you'll just come this way, the custodian will see to the box, and I'll take care of the opening of your account. Nice weather you're having here in Kansas City. I've been here long? <laughs> Only a week. <laughs> Well, it gets dry. Yes, I've heard it gets a little dry some seasons of the year. Here we are. Now, uh, what size box did you have in mind, Mr. Feld? Well, it doesn't matter, really. I uh, have this package of bonds I'd like to leave. Hmm, $125,000. Nice little nest egg, Mr. Feld. Yes, I've been sort of looking forward to using those. You're staying on in Kansas City? Oh, yes, I'm opening a branch office here. Well, that's fine. We're glad to have additions to Kansas City business life. I hope you won't hesitate to call on us if we can be of any service to you. Well, thank you. I think I can use some of your money from time to time. All right. We'll be glad to see you any time, Mr. Feld. Call on us for anything we can do for you in our line. I'll do that. City Bank. Yes, this is cashier's office. What? Oh, oh, yes. New shipment from Federal Reserve. Today? Thank you. May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, if you will. I'm Henry Blakefield Baker. I'd like to see Mr. Avery. He's the cashier, isn't he? Yes, he is. It's about opening an account and renting a lockbox. I uh, have a large quantity of Liberty Bonds here, and I don't want to carry them around with me. Yes, Mr. Baker. Just a moment, please. I'll get Mr. Avery for you. <laughs> Merchant Bank, freely speaking. Yes. Okay, have it ready this yes. afternoon. Yes, sir. May I do something for you? Uh, Mr. Frayling? Yes, sir. I'm Michael Johnson. I'd like to open an account with your bank. I'd be glad to take care of it. Oh, yes, and uh, I'd like to arrange for a lockbox, too. I uh, have here about 125000 in U.S. Liberty bonds that I'm not too keen about carrying around with me. Well, I should imagine not. We'll take care of the box first in that case. Now, if you just come this way, the customer... <laughs> Four months later, John Parker pays another of his frequent visits to the several banks. This time, he returns to the Farmers' Trust in Independence. He carries $8,000 in U.S. Liberty Bonds with him. Morning, Mr. Smith. Good morning, Ray. How do you do, Mr. Smith? How are you today, Alice? Well, hello, Mr. Smith. Hello, Alice. How are things with the cashier's office, huh? Couldn't be better, thanks. Can we do something for you? You bet you can. Uh, Trent around? Ah, uh-huh, he's gone up to the president's office. But he ought to be back any minute. Oh, then I'll wait for him. Oh, there he is now. Well, good morning, Mr. Smith. Morning, Trent. How goes it? Fine, thank you. Been pretty busy the last few days. Now, what can we do for you today? Well, I think I'm in the market for a small loan today, about 7000 How about it? Yes, indeed. Your credit is ace high here. You know, I was telling Alice yesterday, if everyone paid off his loans as you do, I'd never have a headache. <laughs> As it is, I've got a chronic one. <laughs> well, you know how it is. Invest wisely, pay off well, or something. A kind of a businessman's adage, eh? <laughs> and now, if you'll just step over here, please. Uh, Liberty bonds for collateral as usual? Yes, yes. I have a chance to turn a little deal that I think will net a nice profit. Uh, you have the bonds there, have you, Mr. Smith? Oh, yes. Here you are. $8,000. Mm-hmm. And you want 7000 is that it? That's right. All right, sir. Just sign right here. Yes. Oh, Alice, have you uh, have you seen my blotter around anywhere? Yes, sir. Here it is, right here. That's fine. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Smith. We'll credit your account with seven thousand dollars. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Trent. Uh, I'll be seeing you in a few days. <laughs> At the end of six months, the setting for John Parker's drama was complete. He had borrowed large sums from one and then another bank, using his good liberty bonds for collateral, and had paid off the loans religiously. And as an extra means of ensuring his financial standing with each firm, $125,000 in forged bonds rested in a lockbox at each bank. It is evening. John and Julia are having dinner at home. So we're all set, huh? All set. Do with your plate? Yeah. Give it to me. Just come off, John. Well, I'll tell you, but prepare to be shocked. Okay, I'm prepared. When? Tomorrow. 
Tomorrow. <laughs> Don't let it throw you, honey. Tomorrow? Oh, gee, I'm so tickled I could break another plate. I think I will. Uh, and another. And another. Oh, goodbye, simple life. Whoa, there. <laughs> Remember, we got to eat breakfast. Boy, this is swell. I've been waiting seven years for this moment. Wait! <laughs> I'll be out in no time, honey. Don't go away from the car. Okay. Which is it? Yeah, Farmer's Trust of Independence. Oh. Now, sit tight. We have to travel fast today. Four towns we got to make before we're set. Yeah, I know. Well, go on. You're wasting time yourself. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Good morning, Baker. How do you do, Mr. Smith? Oh, how are you today, Ellen? Well, good morning, Mr. Smith. You're an early caller today. Good morning, Fred. Yes, I seem to have a busy day ahead. Fine. Busy days sound good to all of us, I guess. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to secure a rather sizable loan. I've got a big deal on today. Good. How much will you need? About 100000 I think. I uh, have $125,000 in liberties in my lockbox that I'll put up as collateral. All right, Mr. Smith. Your credit's always good with us. Now, do you want the proceeds of the loan placed to the credit of your checking account? Uh, no, no, I want cash. I'm buying a piece of property, you see, and the old farmer I'm dealing with insisted that I pay in cash. In fact, the old codger wanted gold, but I finally convinced him the bank couldn't let me have gold. All right. Now, if you'll just step over here to the note teller's window, we'll get your money. Morning, Mr. Fell. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Fell. Good morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, top of the morning to you, Dixon. Same to you, Mr. Feld. How's high finance these days? <laughs> well, pretty good at that. I got a big deal on today. Ah, fine. Glad to hear it. I'd like to borrow a pretty sizable sum with the bonds in my lockbox for collateral. How about it? Yes, sir. Won't you step over here into my office? About how much? Oh, I think about a hundred thousand will do. Good morning, Avery. How are you today? Oh, Mr. Baker, fine, thanks. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, you can lend me a hundred thousand dollars. I have one hundred twenty-five thousand in liberties down in my lockbox. I'll put those up as collateral. I'll have the note ready in just a few minutes. Morning, Freely. How are you? Morning, Mr. Johnson. What's it going to be today? Well, today I'm in the market for a rather large loan. I'll, of course, put up Liberty Bonds as collateral as usual. Oh, for the open road. No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you must be about to the Colorado line by now, huh, John? Almost. We ought to be able to get a boat right away when we get to San Diego. <laughs> we have to. Oh, gee, honey. Isn't this great? Yeah. Yeah, we won't ever be able to come back to this country, but then I guess the rest of the world's big enough to keep us entertained. <laughs> How about it, Julie? Sure. <laughs> is that a car following us, John? No. I'll bet it is. No, it isn't, Julie. No one will look for us until the bank examiners make the round. Maybe they already made the round. Oh, for the love of Mike. Sometimes you get me so sore I could sock you. Just how dumb do you think I am? I planned this job so that we'd have two months before the examiners went around. But maybe the cashiers have spotted the bogus bonds. Did you ever take a look at those bonds, Julie? No. Well, you can't tell they're phonies unless you read every line of them. And I don't think the cashiers will. For heaven's sakes, what do you think I spent six months building up my credit for? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start an argument. Okay, then. Just relax. We're absolutely safe until the examiners make the rounds. And then we'll be on the high seas. Oh, look. Look, John. There's a swell roadhouse. Let's stop and eat. It's way after 7 o'clock. Okay, we eat. Five days later, back in the city bank of Kansas City, Kansas, chaos takes hold. The bank examiners arrive unexpectedly. Hey, well, good morning, Mr. Brown. Uh, good morning, Mr. Avery. Well, how is business in the city bank? Very good, sir. You're a little ahead of time, aren't you, Mr. Brown? Yes, a little. I'm going on a vacation in a few days, and I thought I'd better get things cleaned up before I left. Well, that's fine. I think you'll find everything in order. All right. Let's start in with your first bookkeeper here. I'll get through with him as soon as I can so he can start to work. <clears throat> uh, would you mind uh, pasting this strip of tape over the ledger tray in that cage, Mr. Avery? No, oh, not at all. We've had a few big loans lately. Business seems to be picking up. Ah, that's so. Hope you didn't take any Liberty Bonds in as collateral. Well, as a matter of fact, we did. Why? You did? Well, where are they? Ah, right back here in the note teller's cage. Anything wrong with Liberty Bonds as collateral? Well, that all depends. Let me look at those bonds. I think you'll find these bonds are all right. One of our best customers, Mr. Baker, left them with us. In fact, he'll be in today, I'm sure. Said he'd be back in about a week. Yes, here are the bonds right here. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Just as I thought. 
Did you check those bonds before you made the loan? Yes, certainly. Have you got any other Liberty bonds here? Yes, sir. Right here. Here's one. All right. Compare them. Take a look at those serial numbers. Well, what do you know about that? I don't understand why these bonds weren't checked closely on such a large loan. Well, sir, the, the bonds were checked. Not as closely as they should have been, perhaps, but, well, the gentleman's always been more than good in his dealings with us. He's well known to us. In fact, we made him several big loans, and he's always paid off before they were due. You realize, of course, that this is the third bank we've discovered in the same situation? No. And absolutely, the third. He used a different name in each case, but undoubtedly is the same man. Hmm. What are the others? Farmers Trust of Independence, People's Bank on the Missouri side, and now yours. No telling how many others he's pulled the same stunt in. Isn't anything being done? You just said yourself that you have no records of the man. He was a slippery one. We can't do anything. No records to go by. Nothing. The fellow covered his tracks completely. Say, wait a minute. Maybe there is something we can do after all. Yes? When he came in for that loan, I remember the teller had to open a new shipment of bills from the Federal Reserve to let him have that much cash. Well, I have the serial numbers of that shipment. Good. That gives us something to work on. Let's get the listings now, and then we can call the police. Two days later, the police have determined by bills passed at restaurants along the road that John Parker, alias Smith, alias Feld, alias Baker, alias Johnson, is on his way to California. It's late evening, and Julia and John are staying in a secluded boarding house in Hollywood, awaiting the time to drive to San Diego and ship out for foreign parts. Well, we have the tickets, baby. We see the South Sea Islands first. How's it sound? Oh, wonderful. Here, let me see. Oh, Jesus, isn't it great? <laughs> when do we sail? Tomorrow morning. And when do we leave here? Mm, tonight at midnight. It'll take us four hours to drive. Oh, gosh. I'm as excited as a little kid going to a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better go get your papers and things packed. I left them for you because I didn't know what to do with them. Well, I guess I'd better. Uh, here, you want to see the paper? Mm-hmm. It was under the landlady's door, but I don't think she reads the paper. Oh, <laughs> you cheap pickpocket. <laughs> go on. Yes. <laughs> hey, John. Hmm? What is it? Have you looked at this paper? No, Why? Pale as a ghost. What is it? Take a look at that. Huh. Great guns. That's us. Oh, Julie, we should never have passed those notes along the road. Sure, sure. Oh, no, they wouldn't find out for two months. The bank examiners wouldn't come. Oh, no, you're always... Well, how would I know? Not... Oh, gee, Julie, let's not fight. we got to think and think fast. Well, we got to get out of this place. We gave the landlady one of those bills this morning. Well, then scram it is, and now. <laughs> Information had been received by the Los Angeles Police Department to be on the lookout for the fleeing pair. In a police car in downtown Los Angeles, officers Rombo and Stromwell of the robbery detail are cruising. I haven't quite a to-do about uh, that man who's got so much dough in that uh, bank hall back east on at headquarters, aren't they? Yeah, and they say there's a woman traveling with him. I should get some more dope on him. I'd like to see a little action about now. Los Angeles police calling all cars. Attention all cars. This may be in your district. Well, I guess you're going to get your action. Be on the lookout for a man and woman driving a package sedan, dark green with disc wheels. Believed to be traveling south in Los Angeles. May be headed for San Diego. Automobile carrying Missouri license. Car 69 and car 83. Call your station. Car 69 and car 83. Call your station. Attention all cars. Repeat and broadcast regarding man and woman. John, hurry. Oh, I wish we could get out of this traffic. But you've got to get out some way. Look out the back. You see anything? No, I don't think they spotted us yet. There's a squad car up ahead. Gosh. You'll see us if we stay in this car. Uh, grab hold the money satchel and set tight, Julie. But what are you going to do? I'm turning in this alley. Another second, they'd have spotted this buggy. we got to ditch it. Come on, come on. Hurry. Where are we going? That beer pole at the end of the alley. Okay. Back entrance. Come on, come on, run. <laughs> John, I'm so scared. Now, take it easy, honey. Here, we'll wander around among the crowd for a minute and then slip out the front. Come on, easy does it now. Let's easy. hurry. No, no, walk slowly. All right, come on now, up the front. All right. Hey, look, Joe. Yeah, a package of damn with disc wheels and a Missouri license. 
Tell the fellows near the car. Okay. Hey, Weaver, we found the car. They must have gone to the beer parlor at the other end of the alley. Take your men and circle around the block. Right. You're safer in that beer joint, not here on the street. Come on. Let's make a dash for that dark street down there. All right. <sighs> oh, oh, they got us, John. Hey, where you are, you two? Come on. They got a bag. Make a run for that car escape. All right. Shooting wild. Oh, I hope this window up here opens. It's our only chance. Hurry! Oh, oh it won't open. Toss that bag down and walk down with your hands up. Oh, this is the end, Julie. I'm sorry, baby. Come on down or we're coming up after you. Throw that police down. You've got it, copper. Now come on down and keep them up. Are you coming or do we come up? No, we're coming. Come on, let's go, Julie. Gee, isn't this great? From literary clubs and denning to the ooze cow in three easy jumps. <laughs> and we were going to live off the fat of the land. That Parker had brains, there is no question. But he misused his natural abilities. He spent years in planning and preparing his grand coup then failed miserably because of two errors. He failed to make allowances for the possibility of the bank examiner being ahead of his scheduled time and forgot that paper money can be traced by serial numbers. And so it always is. There is no perfect crime. Always the criminal fondly believes he has perpetrated one, and then the authorities prove him wrong. And so once again establish the fact that crime does not pay. (laughs) 